I'm going to make chicken pot pie in um, the Omni oven. So I'm poaching a couple of chicken breasts with some ta tarragon, no, thyme, um, and wine, and water, and salt and pepper, and a little olive oil. So I'm going to poach that and let that cool and shred that up. Hi there, and welcome to Adventures on Hellacious. We are Brian and Helen, and we love to sail. In 2009, we embarked on a seven-year project building a 43-foot aluminum sloop behind my sculpture studio in Tennessee with a dream of exploring the planet by boat. What started as 10,000 pounds of flat aluminum plate grew into a beautiful and incredibly seaworthy hull. We did every bit of the work ourselves, filling her with handmade cabinetry, sewing the upholstery, wiring, mechanical, and rigging. Building Hellacious was a labor of love. We launched her on the Tennessee River in 2016 and then took her south down the waterways to the Gulf Coast, where we slowly began learning the ways of Neptune. In January 2020, we moved aboard full time and set off on our big adventure. Since then, we have voyaged more than 20,000 miles from the Caribbean to the Arctic Circle and back again. Thanks for joining us as we share our journey on this amazing water world that we have the privilege of navigating. And now we're gonna cook chicken pie. Got some onions, carrots, and celery chopped up. And look at this lovely bouquet we got at the grocery store here in Jolly Harbor. And then we're gonna make Irish soda bread to go on top and we're gonna cook it in the Omnia. This is buttermilk in the making. I have a cup of milk with a tablespoon of white vinegar and let it sit for a little while and that makes buttermilk. And then we're also that's we're gonna put some of this Spanish cremosa to thicken it up. Should be good. But first you must be wondering what the heck is an omnia oven? Let me show you. The Omnia looks sort of like a saucepan with the lid on. It has a thermometer on the front. When you open it up, it looks sort of like a bunt pan. It's got these silicon liners and a rack. And there's a hole that goes through the middle. And a hole, the, the pot thing sits on a stainless steel ring which is the burner ring so that transfers the heat into this aluminum bunt ring All right also the heat can then come up through the middle there's two silicon uh, liners a dark red one presumably for like tomato based foods and then a lighter one for uh, lighter colored foods <laughs> I don't know um, but they're good. They keep the food from sticking um, and also can hold it up on that uh, rack above the heat so the bottom doesn't burn, uh, which seems to be the problem with the Omnia. But anyway, you, it basically it's on real low heat and it's a little oven. So you put the lid on and the heat builds up through the middle and on the bottom and it, it bakes just like an oven. We've baked um, nut bread and brownies and it uses less energy, uh, propane gas, than the uh, Dickinson Mediterranean oven that we have. And it doesn't heat the boat up as much. So down here in the Caribbean it really makes a difference. Uh, unfortunately you can't use the Omnia on the electric cooker. Um, we were introduced to this thing, uh, which is made in Sweden by a Swedish couple uh, on Lenny Sailing. Uh, we met them in Porto Santo in uh, Madeira. Uh, very cool couple um, out sailing around the world like we are. Uh, so yeah, cool thing. And uh, we're learning how to use it and fairly recommended. 
cooking away. We love using our little electric cooker that uh, cost about $60 and uses some electricity but not too much off our inverter. But for cooking during the day when the sunlight's out, we are actually cooking for free. And it doesn't uh, heat up the galley and uh, doesn't burn carbon. So we are good. Um, actually bought a backup uh, when we were back in the States. So if this one breaks, which it's been going for two years quite happily, so we depend on this more and more. Uh, chicken looks good and <clears throat> let it cook. Meanwhile, working on my blog. Writing about St. Pierre. It's a nice office you have here. It's a very nice office, yes. I'm not complaining. All right, so I've poached the chicken and it looks really nice and decided to keep the broth and not maybe not use the commercial broth that I mixed up because this stuff here in the pan is chicken chicken water and a little wine and herbs and some salt and pepper. So that should be quite tasty. So now we'll let this cool a bit and I'll put the veggies on to saute next. And uh, by the way, that's the view out the window from the galley on Hellacious at Jolly Harbor. Not bad. Beautiful afternoon. Okay, back to work. And now we're heating up some nice olive oil in that skillet I wiped out from the chicken. I'm going to throw the onions, carrots, and celery. Vegetables are sautéed. I've added some salt and pepper and uh, the thyme. I think it's thyme. And now I'm gonna pour this stock in. Not quite enough. And I'll pour a little more of this other stock in. enough. I don't want it too much. Oh, shit. I was supposed to put <laughs> some flour in there, I think, to thicken this up. Oh, well, I know how to thicken it up. We'll use a little cornstarch. That always works. And um, we'll do that toward the end. Mix some cornstarch with some cold water. That's my uh, Chinese cooking trick from making another recipe called tomato beef and if you're lucky I'll cook that for you next well maybe not next sometime if you ask me nicely okay. we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes thicken up back in a mo thing I like about the electric induction cooker is you can get the temperature just exactly where you want it so I increased it 20 degrees from 230 to 250. And so it's simmering nicely and no waste. Still got some light outside, so we're still charging the batteries. We're going to a deficit, but it doesn't matter overnight. It'll be a sunny day again tomorrow because we're in the Caribbean where it's pretty much always sunny. I've shredded the chicken. I went ahead and did both breasts because I want some chicken. And I gotta kind of calculate the volume of the Omnia ring. Um, I think this will fit. So now it's time to try to thicken up this uh, stuff here. We've got a cornstarch mixture, which is really just about a heaping 
teaspoon, right? That's that spoon right there with two or two and a half of those of water. I'm just going to dump it in there and uh, stir it around. Let that cook. Actually, <laughs> I'm kind of going to add a little stock. I'm going to get a little gravy. I want that to thicken up just a little bit. Takes just a couple of minutes. But you never want to put cornstarch that's not mixed with water. Cold water and cornstarch. That's how you thicken things up. If you put too much and you don't cook it enough, it'll taste like cornstarch. If you do it right, nobody will ever know that you forgot to put the flour in. You gotta know these things when you're forgetful. Surprising amount of water or stock. I think I got distracted and let that cook down a little too much, but it'll be even more savory. Okay, that's looking all right. Not too liquidy, but not too gelatinous. Don't want to add too much cornstarch. Okay. We're going to turn that off, and then we're going to make the Irish soda bread to daub on top. We're preheating the Omnia over here and adding this Cremosa Miracle in a Box, not available in North America, to... <laughs> Our, our chicken, we added the chicken, and it tastes good. A nice and thick, creamy sauce. We had this cremosa opened a few days ago and had it in the fridge. So we're going to cook it a bit, bring it up, oh, bring it up to the temperature. And then we're, while this is all heating up, we're going to mix up the soda bread. So that we can dab it on top and um, you know an ideal way to do this would be to use uh, bisquick which is a uh, biscuit mix in a box but uh, we don't have that we'll make our own pretty simple okay Helen's gonna mix up the soda bread and we're doing a half a recipe off this all recipes uh, thing on the inner web one cup of flour, all-purpose flour, Brennan's Irish soda bread. There you go. And then we've uh, a little bit of sugar, about that much sugar, half a tablespoon, and then uh, I would go. It says a half teaspoon, but we're not going to divide that in half. You need at least half a teaspoon baking soda and this baking baking powder no baking soda bicarbonate of soda right arm and hammer but this happens to be irish which we've got in ireland and then a little salt it's got to have some salt Mix that all up with a knife, okay. And then goes that buttermilk that we started making about an hour ago. Oop. Hang on, this is ready. I'm gonna put that on pause. That's done. I'm going to turn it out and knead it a couple of times. Helen is quite the expert. She studied at the uh, Irish School of Soda Bread 
manufacturing between the years of 1934 and 1978, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, and um, got a degree. She got she got a degree. It wasn't a first, but she did okay. So today she's showing us. If you incorporate the fly, it becomes a um, spotted dick. <laughs> Right. Isn't that what those? Oh, they're raisins. That's what's in a spotted dick, right? Okay. All right. So, yeah. That it's looks great. Kind of and then together. we're gonna break that up into little pieces. All right. All right. Helen's gonna roll the dough up into little balls, and then we'll kind of smush those as we put them on top of the stuff in the Omnia ring, which is heating up now, which is nice and hot, 350. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. And um, I think we're ready to put the stuff in the ring. All right, so we're putting this in the silicon ring. Probably a little over full, but that's Find out. A pretty good amount. And then, uh, oh, oh. yep, that's blacksmith's fingers, don't worry. I'm going to put this ring in the preheated Omnia. And then we're going to toss these. I'm going to kind of mush them out. I want them to stick together. Oh, there's a lot of heat coming up through there. Pretty cool. Like a little chimney. I think we could have made a little more dough. So maybe next time we'll do two thirds of the recipe. It will rise. It will spread out. Use the thing when you put it back on. Okay, Helen says use the thing when I put it back on so I don't burn my little fingies. There's a lot of heat coming out of the middle of that thing. So, um, yeah. Okay, get I'm going to get the lid on, but I have my hands all done. So Helen's going to do it. Looking good. Ready, go. 40 minutes. We've got this uh, Omnia on low, and it's not e quite at 300 Fahrenheit. So hopefully that'll brown the bread. But if it gets too much hotter, Helen says she has discovered that it'll burn the bottom. So we don't want to burn the bottom. Uh, so it's a balance. And we'll see uh, here in uh, another 10 minutes or so what the bread looks like. It's been about 30 minutes and uh, temperature is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Bread is getting brown on top, bubbling away. It's going to be very well cooked. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go five more minutes and make sure the bread is cooked, but it looks great. All right, the timer's gone off. It's been 35 minutes. That looks pretty edible. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and let this guy cool down. Wish we had a little more bread on there. Didn't expand quite as much as we hoped, but it about doubled in size, volume. So I think if we had done two thirds the recipe, would have been good, but it's gonna be delicious. And we'll let you know here in a few minutes after it cools down enough to eat. Mmm. Gonna leave the lid off so it doesn't go soggy. Stay tuned. Turn the gas off. I love our little galley here on Hellacious. Compact and efficient. With the best draining rack on the seas. All right, served up chicken pot pie from the Omnia, but the proof will be in the pudding. <laughs> now we get to eat it, and no filming while eating. That's the rule. <laughs>